Okay, so the Fallout TV show has now been out for a couple of days. I binge watched the whole thing in two sessions. Like if I didn't have to work, I would have watched it all in one sitting. And now it's been a couple of days after that. I've been able to marinate on it and really think about it. And honestly, I think it's amazing. As I was watching it, I had the biggest smile on my face. I was just like, this is sick. Now that I've let it marinate for a bit over the last couple of days, I can confirm it is sick. It's really good. I was super scared because I saw everything that happened with the Halo TV show. I saw how they messed up the Witcher TV show. So obviously I went into this with just zero expectations and I left thoroughly blown away. So here I am today on New Vegas. I'm just going to be walking around shooting everything that's in my way and just talking, mostly gushing about how much I enjoyed the Fallout TV show. And I don't think I'm alone in that. I feel like a great majority of people really, really liked what they saw. Where do we even begin with something that was so good? I guess I just talk about the beginning, like the opening sequence with the vault. That was done so well. It felt like it was the opening of a Fallout game. You know that feeling that most Fallout games have where you, you start, you, like there's the vault and it's just... I don't know how other to explain that it felt like a new Fallout game. It felt like a good new Fallout experience. The whole the whole way the vault is, the way the people are in it, the whole Lucy and Chet, like her cousin thing was just, that was so out of pocket, but it was so Fallout. It was just very, very good. It was so well done. It was funny as, and seeing everything in the vault, seeing a vault come to life in live action like that, honestly, I just, I just absolutely loved it. And then the, the whole battle in the vault as well with the Raiders from 32. That was sick. Like that was actually so well done. That was so good. There was a part in the battle where someone had a gun in someone's mouth and started shooting through the back of his head. That's like that guy had the bloody mess perk on. Like that was crazy. I'm so glad they didn't shy away from all the gore and everything. Like bodies exploding in Fallout was a huge thing, at least in Fallout 3 and New Vegas. And so for them to incorporate something like that into the show, of course, having people just randomly explode all of the time, not the easiest thing to do, but they didn't shy away from the gore. And in the battle as well, like the projector got damaged and it started burning away. The way that it animated like a nuke falling in the vault on the projector and on the projection was just, what a touch, man. Like, that was so well done. That was, mmm. I was just watching the, I just, my, the whole show I was just watching like a little kid with this big fucking smirk on my face. And I feel like it really kicked off from there. That was just, oh man, I just, I can't, I can't. It was so good. And like, speaking of nukes dropping, that opening scene with Cooper and his daughter, when the nukes actually do start falling while they're at that birthday party. Oh my God. Like, oh my God. That was... Like, I had chills watching it, seeing him try to get away on the horse and just the nukes dropping closer and closer and you're just seeing the city be devastated. The spectacle of it. The spectacle of it was just something else, man. It was just something else. Like, yeah, I loved it. I loved the whole opening sequence. Back to the vault, Lucy. Lucy McLean. I'm, uh, I'm in love with her, like, uh, low-key. Low-key? No, high-key. High-key, I'm in love with her. Lucy as a character is, she's a little over the top. She's a little much, I'm gonna be honest, she is. But at the same time, I'm in love with her. I really, I super am. Just the way, the way she speaks is so hilarious to me. She, like, she tries to speech check her way out of absolutely everything it's it's so good because obviously her speech skill is not high enough and she just fails all the time and so it always it always just you know uh escalates into conflict and that makes me laugh that's such a fallout thing but yeah lucy mclean great what a great like new vault protagonist i saw a comment thread uh the other day about what her title would be like we have the lone wanderer we have the courier the sole survivor uh and i am interested to see if they do give her her own title i saw a bunch of people throwing around like the bride and the widow and whatever else so i wonder if she will eventually get a title that'd be cool and speaking of lucy and the vault and everything the pip boy oh my god they nailed 
killed the Pip Boy. Like they did, they just they went in on everything. It was so well done. The Pip Boy screen, the animations on it, the way she was like you saw different screens of the Pip Boy rip straight out of the game. The sounds. It was all done perfectly. And the way that it works is like a Geiger counter as well. And you just hear the Geiger going off. And it's funny because the Pip-Boy is such a little thing. It's a massive thing in the games, obviously. But in the show, it's more of a little thing. It just makes it so much better, especially coming from a fan of the game's point of view. For most people watching this, at least the people being introduced to Fallout now, it's probably just like a, it's a nothing. It's a nothing. It's just a cool part of the world or whatever. To someone who has played these games religiously for years and years and years of his life, that the Pip-Boy was just so well done. I just, yeah. But going back to Cooper Howard and the bombs dropping at the start, the ghoul, he is such a cool character. Such a cool character. And the way that they have him linked back to before the war, like he's been around for the 200 plus years and everything, and having that link back to the past so you're able to see from his point of view and everything leading up to the war, they couldn't have done it better. I really don't think they could have done it better. It's He's such a great character as both the movie star and and the ghoul, and later on, during, like, one of his flashbacks, you actually find out that he is essentially, he is essentially the model on which Vault Boy was built, like, the thumbs up, the, the iconic Vault Boy thumbs up, has essentially come from him, and it's just, the way it all ties in, it's like he's, he, back pre-war, he's friends with the voice of Codsworth, and it's, like, just seeing that stuff is just so, it's so cool, it's so cool, yeah, it makes me so happy, we've kind of been starved on the Fallout front for the last few years, for the last half a decade, probably. And this TV show has just come along and absolutely knocked it out of the park. Coop's weapon as well, that pistol, shotgun, hybrid. It's more like a shotgun. Maybe it's more like a nade launcher. I don't actually know. It's like a bolt gun out of 40k or something like that. The way that it's just explosive and it just, he just rinses through crowds with it. It's absolutely, it's insane to watch. It's such a fallout weapon and it's honestly, it's kind of an iconic weapon for one of the characters to have and just go around blasting with. And his combat, like, prowess in general, it's it's just, it's so, it's so great. He is a great, great fighter, and it was, uh, it was mad watching him go to town, to be honest. And that end scene with the Brotherhood of Steel, and the way that he knew where the power armor's, like, fault lied because he'd worn one in the war before the, before the, uh, nukes dropped, amazing. And then there's Maximus as well. Honestly, he was the weakest of the characters for me. That's not to say that he is a weak character. He was the weakest for me personally, but I did, I, I like his character as well. And it's cool. I think they, this was a, see, I've never played Fallout 1 or 2. So my whole knowledge of everything going on, I don't really know too much about it regarding like the Enclave and the Brotherhood and rah, 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 rah. So the Brotherhood definitely seemed very different compared to what I'm used to. And I kind of liked it. Seeing him kind of navigate his way through the Brotherhood was refreshing. I never realized that they were, I okay, like they're a cult. Of course they're a cult. But I never really saw the side with like the priests. Like when Maximus is getting, Maximus is going to be executed at one point, And you see the priest like waving around, giving him his last rites. And it's, it's very cool. It's a part of the Brotherhood that I didn't really know existed. And it's definitely opened up my interest into them. Also, oh my God, the Pridwin being, being present. Oh my God, the first time I saw that thing in Fallout 4, I lost my mind. And seeing it again in the show, I lost my mind for a second time. I also like about Maximus how he's kind of a badass. Like he has the Brotherhood training, right? He has the training and he can just, he can go to town on pretty much anything and everything. But I'm glad that he has a goofy side as well because the ghoul obviously doesn't have that goofy side. He's completely serious. Lucy, for the most part, is pretty goofy the whole time. And Maximus is basically the in-between of both of them. And it's just a cool little dynamic especially when they're all together in the few times that they are and speaking of the brotherhood the power armor it honestly looked really cool but and this was like my major gripe with the show my only gripe with the show some of the cgi scenes with the power armor were janky they were really really 
really, really janky. And that's okay, you know, in the great sea of how good the show was, I could look past it. It didn't ruin my experience. Like, obviously, I would have loved if the power armor was portrayed correctly. It's like they didn't know how to animate with its weight. I don't know if that makes sense. I, obviously, it's, it must have been extremely difficult to try and, you know, bring power armor like that into live action for the most part it looked really good it did but there were a couple of scenes where it was it was like it was hard to watch it was like oh oh no that doesn't look right that doesn't even feel right and I'm not even experiencing it firsthand. You know what I mean? But again, that's it's okay. I'm sure that that is something they will concentrate on and maybe even try and fix going into newer seasons. If not, it's honestly no big deal. It's I can survive if the power armor is a little janky. One of my other little gripes with the show, and I'm, I think a lot of people are feeling this way, is that we found out that vault essentially dropped the nukes or they moved the needle in in the like on the war front where like peace treaties or negotiations and everything vault had a huge hand in making sure that those didn't come to fruition i think that's what the show is more leaning towards unless i'm just blanking and they just flat out said that they hit the nukes i think a lady does say we push the button however i feel like running interference on any kind of peace options as well may have been an option in in any sense it is an insane premise that vault tech is the main cause of the great not the great war but the nukes being dropped that is insane insane however humans are inherently shitty and the further that we go into our future like right now us in the present the further that we march on through time, the more and more that it becomes kind of believable to me that humans are capable of something as shitty as that, as boosting profits in the future. I can 100% see someone or a group of people being that unhinged that they could see logic in that and could go ahead with it. So what I'm saying is I am able to suspend my disbelief in that plot point. I'm able to do, I'm able to suspend my disbelief. Like it's it's a wild one. It 1000% is a wild one. But at the end of the day it's not like it's not like it's not full out breaking for me. You know what I mean? It's not like oh no, that's that's so stupid. Humans suck and I could 1000% see a reality like that kind of shaking out. What the end game is and everything, I don't really understand or I have thought about a lot. But in a sick twisted way, you know, Vault Tech and what they did yeah i could see it plausibly happening i real, i i honestly could moving away from that most of the side characters in the show as well were fantastic off the top of my head just thinking of the snake oil salesman and the two times that you see him in the show is it two times it might be more than two times but the two main times where you see maximus rescue him from getting a brutal beat down to come to come and find out that he was trying to have sex with chickens to then him, I think his name's Thaddeus, to him then interacting with Thaddeus and healing his absolutely mangled foot and ending up with a fusion core. I kind of I kind of look forward to seeing uh, him in the future. If he's not, he, he will be, he will be in the future. They don't just plant a seed like that and let it go, you know, untouched. I saw someone say that he looked like a, uh, that he looked like... <laughs> A character brought into the show from the Wild Wasteland perk. And I 1000% agree with that sentiment. So in Philly, Maximus interacts with like a, a little sales, a, a little saleswoman who does repairs and everything like that. And she says that she wants five caps to repair the part from the power armor. He doesn't have five caps. And so he goes and gets a tooth pulled out so that he can pay the five caps to her. And she just touches it. She just touches it with with the welder or whatever she's got and fixes it instantly. And he's able to go fix it like that. But for him to do that, he had to go get a tooth pulled. Funny stuff. Also thinking about it now, I wonder if... Okay, all right. No, well, okay. It is funny. It's a bit foreshadowy. He got a tooth pulled out and later on in the show, he gets shot by, a, by like a scavenger or a raider and, or a cannibal, uh, a fiend. He gets shot by a fiend and come to find out that he has an infect like they're using teeth 
as bullets, as ammo. Very funny, very good. Kind of a hilarious tie-in now that I'm thinking about it. So yeah, it was great as well to see Lucy's whole like storyline. Her storyline felt like it was ripped straight out of a Fallout game. We could have got Fallout 5 and had that storyline and it would have felt the same as every other Fallout. Sure, whatever, it's not a big deal. But it, do, it, it just it felt straight out of a Fallout game and I so appreciate that because you're not just going through the motions doing it. You're getting to experience it. You're getting to watch someone else do it. It's not you doing it. I don't think I've explained that real well, but I just like that feeling that it gave me. And then seeing like during her story, the pivotal moments where you could see maybe her karma would start swinging and maybe she would start to become a little bit of a villain, but she just stuck to who she was. Like the Wasteland started changing her. It really did. She had to do things that, you know, she never wanted to do, but it didn't change her core. And I, yeah, that was that was super good to see. It's great to see she's kept her same values and everything. And speaking of like the wasteland changing you and everything, it's funny how Coop, uh, the ghoul, said that there's the one there's the one rule of the wasteland, and that is you will always get distracted by some bullshit. That was that's a great line. That is such an excellent line. It's so it's so refreshing. They knew what they were doing when they were making this, when they were writing it and filming it and building it. They knew what they were doing and. And I'm just, I'm so happy that we've all got to experience this. And I really do hope that this brings in more fans to fall out. Might even push Bethesda to loan out the IP and actually get some new games going. Sorry, that was a bit of copium. And seeing not just the three vaults, like Vault uh, 31, 32, and 33, but seeing them, uh, Maximus and Lucy, end up in Vault 4 as well, that was great. To see another vault in action was... And that vault was amazing. I did have a tiny, a small, tiny little gripe with that. How did Vault 4 get Maximus's armor back to the vault? Because I don't think they had any other fusion cores. That was the whole thing, right? Was Vault 4, they steal the fusion core and then they give it back. How did they get his armor back? It doesn't matter. I accepted in the Dark Knight Rises that Batman just somehow got back to Gotham. I can accept that Maximus' power armor was somehow dragged back to Vault 4. And Vault 4 was just great. It was actually hilarious how at the end of Vault 4, where it looked like Lucy was in a lot of trouble and she was in danger and they were going to like off with her head to then just where he couldn't cut the he couldn't cut her hand to as that was funny as the overseer in that vault was pretty cool as well it was weird seeing a cyclops it was super strange seeing a mutated guy like that but i i dug it i really i loved it i loved him Speaking of like mutants and, uh, you know, mutated people and everything like that, I would have liked to see a few more creatures, like seeing the Yao Guai. That was super cool, seeing it do battle with like Brotherhood of Steel Power Armor. That was super dope. That was awesome. I would have really, really, really liked to see a Death Claw. Obviously, that's been teased. There was the scene where you see the Death Claw skull. So I'm down for that. But I, you know, there was Rad Roaches and whatnot. I would have loved to see maybe giant rats, maybe some Rad Scorpions, bloat flies. Yeah, you know, they have such a they've got such a well to pick from. And maybe some geckos. I I don't know. I it was there was Brahmin, which was super cool to see. I did like seeing a Brahmin. But yeah, it I you know, it's a minor thing. It's leaving more open in the future. We're gonna definitely see more creatures. I also would have loved to see some super muties. That's okay though. Like I said, it just leaves more. They didn't blow their load instantly. They didn't blow it instantly. They didn't just go absolutely ape shit straight away. It was cool that dog meat was included. When dog meat got stabbed by the ghoul straight away, I was actually so cranky. I was so angry. I was like, how are you going to have dog meat in this and get rid of him straight away? I was so pissed off and I hated the ghoul. And then, then, then to see that he was actually just wounded and you could give him a little stim pack and that was it. Dog meat was back. Yeah, I fell for the bait. 1000% I fell for the bait. And dog meat's just like a staple. I hope that means that dog meat is just unkillable. That's that's what that should mean, right? So he's gonna be there until the very end. And the music, hold, dude, the the thing that really tied it all together, the thing that drove it home was the way they used the music, the way that they incorporated the music, like in-game music, to the songs that like that iconify 
fall out. The way they used it all, I it's very rare. I've got this thing where I don't notice music a whole lot in media, games, movies, whatever. It's just some. I love music. Like that's what that's one of my biggest joys in life is music. When it comes to video games and media, I just don't notice it. I don't know why. Maybe because it's so good in nearly everything that you don't realize it's there. Like it's doing its job so well that you just, it just blends in and it becomes part of what you're watching and it becomes part of the whole. Maybe it just turns visual for me. I don't know. This show used the music so perfectly in such a nostalgic way that I just, I lost my mind nearly every time something came on. And all the different props, seeing the stim pack in the med kit, seeing, seeing the ghoul throw the caps after eating the tomatoes, seeing Nuka-Cola machines, the red rocket stop there's a sunset sasa perilla truck like i just can't praise it enough okay i think i've talked for long enough my throat hurts that's how much i've been talking i am this never happens i talk all the time i will say that final shot with hank lucy's dad looking at new vegas that was that was that made oh mate chills i got super excited i just got super excited seeing that thinking about what's in store for the show i haven't really talked about the ncr and how they're handled and the whole shady sands thing because i honestly that I don't care about that stuff like that part of the law I don't care I know a lot of people do and they passionately care about it like that's cool that's fine like and to see it just wiped off the map like that with little to no explanation I get why people are upset about it to me I, I don't really care so I haven't touched on that at all and and yeah I'm interested going forward seeing in both the next season or seasons and the next game how cold fusion is gonna work and affect the wasteland so yeah I think I pretty I covered pretty much everything I wanted to talk about obviously i haven't talked about a lot of the stuff in the show i've watched it all the way through once and i wasn't really mentally you know thinking about absolutely everything because i was in just such shock and awe of how good it was it was such a fan service it was such it felt like it was a love letter to the people who play the games it really i just i loved it and so with that i think i'll leave it here i think i'll leave it here if you have watched this far and you've listened to me just talk kind of all over the place thank you so much but the show has one last thing the show has definitely ignited something in me uh fallout related i think i'm about to just start pumping out a whole bunch of fallout videos i think that's i think i'm about to i think i'm about to start playing all the games again i think uh yeah i think it's time for a whole new adventure in all of the wastelands thank you so much for watching